on Thursday this week. We are in the Wells Fargo Rose Garden to talk about roses of all things today with Leslie. So thanks for joining us. We have a few questions for Leslie. So Leslie, go ahead and introduce yourself and this garden. Hi everybody, my name is Leslie Hunter. I'm the senior, senior horticulturist here at the gardens and I take care of the Wells Fargo Rose Garden. Um, and a few things that I want to tell you about with the Rose Garden is that we do this garden completely organic, uh, which is kind of a fun thing about this garden. It's a definitely a challenge for me. We have about 217 rose plants in this garden, about 134 different cultivars of roses. So a lot of different types of roses in here. Um, a majority of the roses that I have are uh, shrub roses by different breeders. Um, one breeder that we have a lot of roses is the Dr. Buck Roses. He was a professor from Iowa State who was um, goal was to find cold hardy um, disease resistant roses for Iowans um, that are pretty easy to take care of. I also have a lot of the David Austin Roses. He's a breeder out of England who's done a lot of work on bringing the old garden rose back uh, the scent and the disease resistant and the, the beautiful colors of those roses. So there's a lot of different types of roses. Uh, my goal in this garden is to find roses for you to grow at home that you don't have to put a lot of effort into. Um, and one thing that's kind of unique um, also about this garden, it's not just um, the organic aspect, but we also incorporate a lot of perennials. Um, I have climbing vines and I have a lot of reseeding annuals that are also in this garden that help kind of make this a garden with roses, not just about the roses. A lot of people see or think of a rose garden as very traditional and just rows of uh, roses in the garden. Um, I believe that you should uh, interplant the roses. It helps with um, bringing in beneficial insects. Uh, it helps um, create more of a garden atmosphere. Uh, roses aren't always in bloom, so it's kind of nice to have something interesting, especially in the front yard of the botanical garden. So that's what kind of makes our garden a little bit more interesting. Um, right now is a great time to come down and see the roses. Uh, right now we're having kind of our fall push of uh, blooms. Um, typically a lot of these roses are uh, remittent or they are uh, repeat bloomers. Um, so they have a pretty nice um, flush in the spring when they first emerge and then they'll bloom sporadically through the summer and then when the temperatures drop again they'll put on another nice fall um, push of blooms before they they go to bed for the winter so right now we've got a lot of roses blooming along with all the perennials and annuals that have matured throughout the year so I think this is a great time to come visit the garden um, do you have any questions for me Alex I want to talk about this rose right behind you just really briefly tell us what this rose is and then how you get it to keep reblooming this is a rebloomer yes. right yes and tell us about the pointy parts on the stem the pointy part. <laughs> so this is a plant um, a rose called carefree beauty this is a dr. Buck rose um, it's probably one of his more famous cultivars um, this one blooms all summer it's very tough it's got really uh, clean foliage to it um, and Look, the pointy in that one yeah. <laughs> pollinators love roses this is what one of the favorite times for them and um, the one thing you're asking me about is the pointy things and those would be these little guys people refer to them as rose thorns but actually roses have prickles and the difference between a prickle and a thorn is prickles are actually part of the epidermis of the, of the rose stem. So much like our skin, roses have, plants have skin, epidermal um, layer, and prickles are kind of just attached to that layer. That's why it makes it easy for us to like pop them off. If you ever get roses from the florist, you can just pop that thorn right off and not, not damage the stem. A thorn is more part of the stem itself. Um, so if you try to try to pop a thorn off you would you would damage the, the stem of the plant so that's kind of the difference either way they both hurt when they poke you I will say that so <laughs> Leslie we have a live question coming in over Facebook oh, fantastic. when is a good rule of thumb to stop deadheading to let rose hips form so about now when it's starting to cool off um, I'm 
this week is probably the last week I'll deadhead and then I'll give it a month to rest. Let those hips form. And for those that don't know, what is a rose hip and um, why do we want them to form? So the rose hip is actually the fruit of a rose. So like any plant, you've got a flower, it gets pollinated and it's gonna form seeds. And the seed head is what's called the rose hip. So like this guy right here, it's gonna form into a hip. And hips are nice. Um, a lot of people have heard of rose hip and like rose hip tea. Um, rose hips are a great uh, source of vitamin C. So, and they're very pretty. Some, some plants have some really beautiful rose hips and the, those roses are actually grown for their hips more than their flowers. Awesome, great questions. Leslie is so knowledgeable. We're so lucky to have her to take care of this garden along with our other garden areas. If you want to learn more about fall gardening with Leslie, you can join us for our fall gardening class on October 6th, and we'll drop that link below. Thanks for joining us for Plant Fact Friday, even though it's Thursday. If you have any suggestions of what you want us to talk about, you can drop those below.